Assalamu alaikum viewers. Uh, welcome to the last episode of the series of program called Organizational Behavior. In today's episode, we're going to discuss international organization behavior and change, thus winding up the prescribed uh, plan for this uh, particular course. Uh, and we have with us Mr. Fawad Bashir, our subject expert, our very vigilant students, uh, Amna, Abdul Rahim, Bilal, and Alia. And I am Komal Tariq. Uh, sir, starting off uh, with uh, today's show, as uh, I've mentioned that today we're going to discuss international organization behavior and change. What is it all about? Basically, uh, previously in previous lectures we discussed the uh, subject in a, a single construct or a local construct. But so far as any organization is concerned, you cannot restrict the business, the boundaries of the business within a single uh, boundary or within a single country or a construct. Because today's uh, environment is known as an environment or era of globalization and economies are known as boundaryless economies so you have to deal with uh, other cultures you have to deal with other uh, you can say uh, businesses in uh, other uh, you can say uh, countries so to deal with that and uh, uh, to have business relations with that with those individuals or with those organizations and being a multinational organization, you might be hiring different individuals from different cultures. Mm -hmm. So uh, the significance of this topic is that you must know what are the major sources of differences amongst different cultures and how to manage them. Okay. And definitely a very important uh, thing known as change and uh, change management. Because as we have already uh, time and again discussed, that change is very fast and change is the, the only, only constant. constant. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, it is uh, very important to deal with uh, the workforce diversity because you are uh, dealing with a diverse workforce mm -hmm. which is coming from different cultures. Okay, Ali, do you have a question here? Yeah, sure. So uh, we, are, we are studying different dimensions uh, which we will face uh, when we go international. Then what are these dimensions and how these can be managed? Okay. Uh, a very known researcher known as uh, Hofstede he was a Dutch researcher. Mm -hmm. He discovered mm -hmm. certain most, uh, you can say, relevant dimensions of marrying different cultures and the differences among them. Uh, and these dimensions, uh, which we will discuss, uncertainty avoidance, and he made indexes of uh, like different countries, even Pakistan as well, mm -hmm. masculinity, femininity index, individualism versus uh, collectivism, collectivism, and power distance index. And afterward, uh, a <coughs> Canadian researcher added a further dimension into it that was like long term versus short term yes. orientation. Okay. So we'll discuss them one by one. Uncertainty awareness is the degree to which people are comfortable with ambiguous situations and with the ability to predict future events with assurance is called uncertainty awareness. Yes. And uh, so far as we uh, in Pakistan are concerned, our uncertainty awareness is higher, low. Hmm. Because we, uh, we uh, can avoid it, and so far as other countries are concerned, they cannot avoid it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Are you so talking about the scenario of the country? That is yeah, why we yeah, are always yeah. uncertain about things, and we're ready about mm -hmm. it. Ready about it, yeah. Ah. Okay. <coughs> and the people with weak uh, uncertainty awareness feel comfortable even though they are an, uh, unsure about current activities of future events. Okay? Yes. Like, uh, in case of Pakistan, we people are like uh, uh, low in it. People with strong uncertainty awareness are most comfortable when they feel a sense of certainty mm. about the present and the future. Definitely. They have maximum of information with them. Then the masculinity versus femininity index, after use the term, masculinity to refer to the degree to which a culture is uh, founded on values that emphasizes independence, aggressiveness, mm -hmm. dominance and physical strength, mm -hmm. manliness you can say. Yes. And so far as the femininity side is concerned, uh, it is the tendency to favor such values as interdependence, com uh, uh, compassion, empathy, and emotional openness. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, so far as we uh, Asian countries are concerned, we are higher in masculinity, yes. mm -hmm. and there is yes. a very strong tendency towards that. Because still, uh, there is a larger ratio of men working in Pakistan yeah, compared right. to women. Very right, very right. And then individualism versus collectivism. Here, uh, it is a dimension that traces cultural tendencies to emphasize either satisfying personal needs or looking after the need of the group. Mm -hmm. And so far as we Asian countries are concerned, we are more towards collective, collective social collective. orientation. Yes. And so far as developed countries uh, are or West is concerned, they are more individualistic in their approaches. 
okay from the view point of individualism pursuing personal interest is seen as being more important mm -hmm. and succeeding in the pursuit of these interests is critical to both personal and societal well being okay then comes the power distance index it is a dimension that reflects the degree to which the members of a society accept differences in power and status among themselves Memphis. again uh, so far as Asian countries generally, research shows that here power distances are high. high. Mm -hmm. There is a huge difference between powerful and lesser powerful entities, be between the government and the masses. And the rich and the uh, poor. Yeah, yeah. But in, in, in uh, the uh, developed countries, this difference is rather towards the like lower, uh, side. lower, lower side. side. Uh, there was a study and uh, it shows that Pakistan is one of those countries where while looking upon an authority, or looking upon a police man, we feel rather insecure. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. rather yes. insecure. Compared to being yeah. secure. Yeah. Yeah. secure. Exactly. So uh, this is due to the uh, power distance index because it is <coughs> towards the hard side. It influences attitudes and behavior by affecting the way that a society is held together. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the last element added by the uh, other researchers, short term versus long term orientation. It reflects the extent to which the members of a national culture and, uh, are oriented towards the recent past and the present versus oriented towards the future. Future. Again, again, our uh, Asian tendency is short term. Like short term. Short term. Short term. Yes. And, uh, we never know what is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Because th th their foresight is like uh, uh, in a very far, far future. Exactly. Yes. That's what they're developing like anything. Plus, there is a social security uh, fund that is aligned and uh, for for the Western people. Yeah. yeah. Whereas here, there is no social security thing. Yeah. Yeah. But it is there, but it is uh, uh, just in documents. That's <laughs> it. Yes. The short term orientation supports immediate uh, consumption and uh, uh, opposes the uh, deferral of player and satisfaction. Because if we know beforehand that I'm uh, like going to earn something after a month, mm -hmm. I might be consuming it beforehand. Definitely. By borrowing it from mm -hmm. someone else. Someone. Because I'll be uh, that's why our society is consumption oriented society. Mm -hmm. And we're not like uh, uh, towards more of like savings and uh, things yes. like that. And long term orientation favors the opposite strategy that is doing <coughs> what is necessary now, whether pleasant or unpleasant, for the sake of future well being. Mm -hmm. Like you. Students are investing in your future mm -hmm. and you are investing time and resources yes. because you might be like looking for your future, your career and, and your uh, uh, long term orientation is there. So all the pointers or all the uh, uh, dimensions that you have mentioned, how are they affecting organizational behavior? Okay. Basically, uh, this is a research based model. Indexes were developed after a very uh, comprehensive uh, question asking and questionnaire. The five dimensional model based on the research by Hofstad is, uh, you can say, uh, does not lack criticism. Mm -hmm. But uh, criticism is there, uh, but still it is a, a valid. very valid approach, mm -hmm. very reliable approach. And nonetheless, the model is the most comprehensive so far, yes. cross-culturally, because uh, 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 it can stimulate useful insight into ways in which organizational behavior varies from one nation or culture to another. Mm -hmm. So this is a foundation so All far right. on the basis of which we measure differences and on the basis of that uh, we can measure as well that what sort of practices are there in uh, different mm -hmm. cultures and uh, what are the bases uh, yes. on the basis of which they are like differing from one another. Yes. So I have a question. Sure. <coughs> so what are the cross-cultural differences in terms of leadership and organizational okay. structure? Okay. Uh, it is uh, again one dimension that when we'll be talking about like organizational behavior in different countries, the leadership style, the dimensions, and the factors influencing the leadership, uh, you can say personality or th those traits, uh, those will differ from culture to culture. Mm -hmm. So uh, if uh, we like uh, move in uh, an Asian culture, here the group orientation is towards more and again power distance indexes towards the higher side. So uh, if we try to create uh, a leadership style here, it is I would say a very confusing style because at the uh, same moment we are group oriented but uh, simultaneously we have a higher power distance power index. Distance. Exactly. So that's why I think in my opinion uh, here the concept of leadership is not that much mm -hmm. clear. But in, in, in those countries uh, individualism, mm -hmm. the positive side of individualism is the sense of ownership. That if you are individualistic, then you own your successes as well as your failures. 
and if you will be, be participating like you will be creating a participative environment mm -hmm. then definitely uh, you are clear about your limitations as well okay definitely. so these are different things or approaches which will uh, create differences among leadership practices as well do these differences also uh, uh, exist when we are talking about an organization's culture yeah, right. or structure very right like uh, there is an example that uh, the structure of family businesses in china Mm -hmm. They reflect the ideology of their uh, patriotism. Definitely. Then uh, they uh, begin together with the, like hierarchy, mutual obligation, responsibility sharing, and then uh, uh, you can say this the culture is a collective culture, <coughs> and they uh, form group. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there is a very strong, uh, you can say, business model known as the cottage industry, mm -hmm. and uh, the that is sort of a home industry, and every member of your your family, family is, is like a member of it. Yeah. Here, there is only head of the family is earning head, exactly. and mm -hmm. all are like oh, a burden okay. to him. I Definitely. would say <laughs> <in our society. laughs> there is only one one yeah. breadwinner always yeah. Yeah. in Pakistan. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, then comes the issue that how to manage these differences. Being a manager, first of all, we have to diagnose. What are the differences that if I am going to do business in more than one culture, first of all, I have to identify the basic traits mm -hmm. on the basis of these dimensions which we have discussed. That what are the dimensions, what are its characteristics, what are their tendencies, and on the basis of that, we'll choose a managerial approach, mm -hmm. the strategic yes. approach, the OB or organizational behavior approach. Right. So we have to manage all these differences if we are not like uh, successful enough in managing these differences definitely we uh, will not be productive enough uh, because uh, one of the very major outcome of uh, the studying this subject is that uh, we at times want to change the behavior of individuals mm -hmm. as well definitely or we have to mold our strategies yes. accordingly mm -hmm. okay Sir, I have a question. Yes, uh, Mostly people have fear of change. Yeah, you're right. So what are those forces that bring change? Okay, first of all, uh, as uh, we uh, generally in life, we face change. Mm -hmm. And in very rare cases, we bring in change in our lives. Okay? Yes. Because there is a macro environment around mm -hmm. us and that is that environment which is controlling our lives. And there are certain factors which are there in our personalities, mm -hmm. which we can change accordingly in to face, face that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the forces might be the nature of workforce, more cultural diversity is there, you have to change it accordingly, increase uh, in professionals. Okay, Professionalism is there, professionals are increasing, you have to change your uh, behavior accordingly. Many new entrants with inadequate skills, definitely yes. you have to change them or you have to change your uh, existing that. structure. Technology, a very faster, uh, you can say, changing element and the economic shocks which we are currently facing very severely exactly. throughout the globe. Yes, economic yes. shocks are there. Rise and fall of like uh, IT industry mm -hmm. very quickly Definitely. and then decline in the value of the euro or uh, currently the dollar and uh, you can say the whole business, capitalistic business empire is towards a, a very, a very you can say steep downfall. Mm -hmm. and then there's a constant sense of competition. Yeah, competition in a globalized environment uh, that brings in change. And uh, Although there are uh, very strong cultural differences, and I would say this is uh, the beauty of the globe, mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. culture. Definitely. But now uh, globalization is bringing in certain uh, similarities as well, that uh, due to, uh, you can see, sharing of uh, information, no cultural similar similarities, similarities are also rising. There. Then social trends are changing uh, due to this. Then world politics. And you know yes. it better. Currently, we are facing it very yes. severely. Yes. And uh, and uh, uh, because the the major forces uh, previously it was a bipolar world. Mm -hmm. Currently, it's a unipolar world, mm -hmm. and they are doing what they are like uh, wanting, what is in favor of them. Okay. Even the fashions are going into. Uh, they are being interchanged yeah. throughout the world. Yeah, very right. So <coughs> whatsoever it is, whether that is good or that is bad, we it have is being to interchanged. face. Yeah, we have to face them. We, we have to face it. Exactly. Uh, is there anything <coughs> that can be managed? Uh, there is a managing plan for all this change. Yeah, right. There are certain methods for it. Definitely, uh, we can respond uh, the change accordingly so that uh, the productivity or efficiency, effectiveness objective would be achieved. Change, making things different. Mm -hmm. Then plan changes, change activities that are intentional and goal oriented. Mm. Structure. We want, to, uh, we want to develop a structure, mm. we have to change it, we are doing it knowingly. And uh, the change agents are those forces or those people 
who uh, act as catalyst mm -hmm. yes. and assume the responsibility for managing change activities. Yes. And uh, research says that the role of change agent is very important. Okay. And they know the impact of change on different. Very right. And these people are, uh, if I would say, uh, are uh, very uh, uh, strong leader, having very strong leadership traits. But sir, when we talk about catalyst, so uh, the literal meaning of catalyst is that that person is not taking uh, part in that reaction. Is it uh, the case in this management world as well? Okay, uh, there is a uh, term used as uh, uh, leadership by example. Mm -hmm. Okay, you will be an exemplary person. Mm -hmm. You will be first of all uh, taking it up. You will be taking uh, the responsibility of yes. it, and then you will be like imposing that change first of all upon yourself. As and an then, example, and then, and then the definitely everyone will follow it. Mm -hmm. If you will try to like impose it only one way, mm -hmm. then definitely uh, today is not the environment definitely. that uh, you can impose all the things. And goals of planned change are improving the ability of the organization to adapt to change in its environment and changing the behavior of individuals and group in the organization. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. first of all, you have to like face it. Mm -hmm. You have to adapt yourself accordingly, and then you have to mold the behaviors of <coughs> individuals within the organization. Yes. So you have to face the music again. Abdurrahim has a question to ask here. Please, Abdurrahim, go ahead. So, my question is, what are the forms of resistance to change are there in environment? Okay. Basically, uh, these are categorized in major two, uh, you can say, classification. Overt and immediate, open, mm -hmm. mean, voicing complaints, engaging in job actions, and uh, you are complaining about it that uh, this is not viable, this is not feasible. And implicit and deferred. Loss of employee loyalty and motivation. He'll not be raising voice, but uh, deep inside he is like uh, losing motivation. Increase errors or mistakes. Increase absenteeism. Mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, if uh, we talk about these things in detail later on, uh, basically organization ha first of all has to like identify that what sort of like uh, resistance they are going to face, and then def definitely they have to manage them accordingly. Ali, do you have a question to ask? Yes, sir. Uh, it has been experienced always that individuals resist right. change. Right. Then what are the sources of this resistance and how this resistance can be overcome? Basically, if, if I'm habitual of doing something, mm -hmm. and if that habit is changed, like in case of a child, when we like uh, force him to go to school, he, he has to change his habits of like sleeping, eating, yes. and uh, all the things. Then uh, that is the major thing, which is like creating resistance. Habit is the major source. Then security or insecurity issue. Then economic factor that if I'll be like changing this thing, it might be like uh, uh, hamper or change my like e economic or input or or my, my you can say earning. Fear of the unknown. That I don't know what are going, mm -hmm. what is going to happen, happen. if if change is there. Is it then going selective. to be positive or negative? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. favorable or unfavorable. Then selective information processing because I don't have the whole information. Mm. So whatever the information is there, uh, based upon my like past experience or or rumors whatsoever it is. So these are like five major elements which will like create resistance in a an individual. And what are the sources of organizational um, res resistance to change? Yeah, at the organizational level the structural inertia that because a structure is moving uh, at a particular pace so far as you uh, want to like uh, manage change uh, in that organization then definitely first of all you have to change the inertia movement you might be like uh, stopping that inertia then you have to convert its direction mm -hmm. like uh, uh, currently the uh, Atabad Jeel, you mm -hmm. might have heard of Definitely. it. Yes, sir. The, uh, you can say accumulation of that water and you cannot control it because it will uh, change uh, or it will uh, select its course on its own. So, uh, inertia is very difficult to control, mm -hmm. first of all. Uh, then limited focus of change because we don't know what is its broader perspective or scenario. Then group inertia within the uh, organization as well. They have their own inertia movement. Threat to expertise. Because mm -hmm. if I am talking about a <coughs> technological change, definitely my past expertise might not be valid for the newer one. So, uh, so this is also a threat for the organization as well. Threat to establish power relationship. Because uh, the power uh, or, or to exert power, one must have has like a higher bargaining power. Mm -hmm. And a higher bargaining power is on the basis of that, you can say, uh, dependence. 
Mm. If their dependence is towards the lower side, I, I'll be very powerful. Mm. But if my, I, my dependence will increase on that particular individual due to uh, any change, mm -hmm. definitely power structure will also definitely. change. That is also a resistance. Threat to establish resource allocation. Okay, Resource allocation role uh, of a manager, if that will change as well, that will be a threat to that person. To, to, to the uh, authority of that person and simultaneously the organizational change mm -hmm. uh, element is there that that person will like, resist as well. So there are uh, certain things that can be done to overcome these changes and uh, communication and education is one of them. What yeah. are the other yeah, things? Right. The participation. If you like make them participate that if the, uh, this is a change and we have to face it, how to face it mm -hmm. and uh, if people participate they'll uh, like uh, collectively take a decision facilitation and support so that change will be inculcated uh, negotiation this negotiation yes, will yeah. be among the people who are going people to be uh, changed uh, who are uh, going to face, uh, yeah, change. face the change it means that preparing them for, preparing the change. Them for the change and uh, here is the uh, role of change agent is very important mm -hmm. and then manipulation and co-optation co-optation is combination of Competition, competition and, and cooperation. cooperation. Okay. Competition is there, but cooperation mm -hmm. is like uh, balance is there. And then coercion, that is the last resort. Because uh, if somebody is not changing accordingly and that is harmful for the organization, that will be punished. But this should be the last resort. Right. And what is the three step change model? A very known model, uh, and uh, that is presented by Levin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was the person. And he talked about uh, unfreezing. First of all, you have to like unfreeze the current yes. status quo. Uh, change efforts to overcome the pressure of both individual resistance and group conformity. Then refreezing uh, re it. Then uh, you have to stabilize the change intervention by balancing. Uh, uh, you can say driving and restraining force. If we'll refer to the slide. Because two sort of forces are there. Mm -hmm. mm. One is driving force towards the chain, other mm -hmm. are restraining mm -hmm. force. So you ha what you have to do is, like first of all, you have to like uh, lose the grip of restraining forces. Driving forces will move towards that. Mm -hmm. Then you have to again, you put can say, put pressure. those mm -hmm. those pressures so or that resistance. the balance should be there. Yes. So uh, in generally, uh, this is a long term process. You cannot bring in change very Definitely. quickly because first of all, you have to uh, like uh, reduce the resistance, restraining force. Then you have to uh, create again a, a sort of resistance in that environment so that that uh, situation which you have created, new situation will be like a uh, prevailing situation mm -hmm. in later on stages. So these three uh, stages are unfreezing, the movement, movement and then and the re 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 Anyone has to ask a question? <coughs> Sir, I have a question that uh, Levin's uh, change model, how this, how does this model affect the organizational behavior, sir? In organization, how does this uh, change model Basically, uh, as we are talking about change, we are talking about innovation, we are talking about growth, we are talking about even survival mm -hmm. in this environment. So uh, this model suggests a very fundamental because there are a lot many other models as well of change, lot many other, and they are focusing upon different other elements. Mm -hmm. But this is a very basic mm -hmm. model. Then definitely, uh, if you have to change the shape of a, a, a cube of uh, uh, an ice, mm -hmm. ice cube, then definitely you have to unfreeze it and then refreeze it mm -hmm. in a different shape. Yes. So this is a very basic model. Mm -hmm. So you have to like go through these stages uh, in any scenario. Mm -hmm. But situation or construct like. Uh, if innovation, innovation is a new idea applied to initiating or improving a product, process or service because this is a positive thing. So you have to unfreeze it. So first of all in this scenario, you have to like uh, create a, a motivation towards that change. Mm -hmm. You have to create an acceptance towards that change. And the sources of innovation are like structure variable, you can say the organization culture, the environment and all these things, the competition simultaneously. And what are basically sir, the contemporary change issues for today's managers because obviously the change is uh, there and uh, it, is an, it is changing at a very fast pace. Yeah. Contemporarily the uh, most you can say the successful model uh, of an organization uh, structure or an approach is known as learning organization. Mm -hmm. yes. An organization that has developed the continuous capacity to adapt and change. Okay. Uh, uh, everyone is ready to change mm -hmm. in that organization. And characteristics of that organization is hold they hold a shared vision. Okay, very important thing. And they discard the old ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, 
uh, it means they, they are like leaving the status quo which is already prevailing views organization as a system of relationships and inter interrelationships okay. communicates openly yeah, yeah. Communication should be open, and they work together to achieve shared vision. Shared vision, okay. definitely. Definitely, that is a, a vision common towards goal. the change. Yeah, common goal and agenda. Another uh, contemporary issue is that uh, there are certain individuals known as idea champions, mm -hmm. sort of change agents. Individuals who take an in innovation and actively and enthusiastically promote the idea, build, support overcome resistance and ensure that idea is implemented. implemented. People mm -hmm. like Bill Gates, I would yes. say. So, so these are the people who would think rather we can say entrepreneurs. Yeah, entrepreneurs in government, yeah. Or who are yeah. initiators of an idea. An idea. Because if uh, an idea initiator will like, conduct his or her own business mm -hmm. known as entrepreneur and if that idea is incubated within the organization yes. and yes. that person is given a provision mm -hmm. that he or she can like uh, take up that idea and that promote. is the vision is being yeah. shared then yeah. that, that he or she can think outside the outside box, the and, box yeah. and that person is knows intra intra within the organization yes. and the uh, fundamental problems organization traditional organization face are like uh, fragmentation based on specialization mm -hmm. interrelationship is not there over emphasis on competition, not cooperation, mm -hmm. rather cooptation. Exactly. Uh, and reactiveness that mm -hmm. uh, misdirects attention to problem solving rather than creation. Mm -hmm. so Your focus is just finding problem and solving them. Why not create like new scenarios where those problems will never exist? If, if they'll be ex like existing in an environment, yes. and they'll be solved very uh, innovatively. And uh, is there any kind of model, sir, for this learning organization? Yeah, basically uh, it has four components. Mm -hmm. First of all, you have to manage the mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. Definitely management means first of all you have to plan it, organize, lead and control mm -hmm. towards mm -hmm. a specific direction. You have to then, secondly, you have to establish a strategy, how yes. to manage it. Then reshape the organization okay. culture, because culture okay. should support the object. Culture should not be, an, uh, uh, you can say, resistance towards that outcome or change. And then redesign the organization structure if mm -hmm. required. But at times, uh, to manage change or learning, you have to change or reshape your structures as well. So I have a question here. Yes. So uh, what are the contemporary issues for today manager in terms of knowledge management? Right. It is a very uh, new term. Although uh, it is an old concept, I would mm -hmm. say everyone and uh, you can say every nation, every organization uh, did so. But now we are doing it consciously. Is it a process of organizing and distributing an organization's shared vision yeah. so that it reaches the right person in a certain organization? You're very right. Uh, it is all about sharing that, uh, you can say, information as well as wisdom. Mm -hmm. Okay, And uh, the right information to the right person at the right and the appropriate mm -hmm. time. Because if that knowledge is not m uh, properly managed or mismanaged, definitely everything will be like uh, hampered and exactly. resistance will be there. Half if, yeah. And uh, why it is important? Uh, basically, intellectual assets are as important as physical assets. Definitely. This is contemporary, you can say, finding that we are not foc no, now focusing yes. on intellectual side of it. So as, as a stage come where individuals leave their knowledge yeah, and right. goes with experience. Yeah, very right, very right. When individuals leave uh, knowledge and experience uh, goes with them, definitely that experience or that knowledge should be like used properly as well. And a knowledge management system reduces redundancy and makes the organization more efficient. Okay. And with this, we also come to the end of today's episode, which is supposed to be the last one of the series of program called Organizational Behavior. Uh, in today's program, viewers, we discussed international organization behavior and the changes related to it. We also discussed what are managers supposed to do in the contemporary world to resist or to face these changes and how to prepare an organization to uh, face these changes so that the efficiency level is always higher. I hope that uh, you have been uh, you have been benefited from these programs, from the series, and uh, you have been able to infer as much knowledge as we try to inculcate. Thank you very much, our expert, Mr. Fawad Bashir, Amna, Abdul Rahim, Bilal, and Alia, all of you for being with us in this uh, series. And uh, from my side, Gomal Tariq, I'm saying Allah Hafiz and thank you very much. <laughs>